Zaydan al Kanini is a political analyst focusing on Iraq and the Middle East, joins me now uh, live from Doha. Good to have you with us. It was only a few days ago uh, the Iraqi courts threw out appeals by some pro-Iranian political parties over the final election results. And that said, it's these very parties that now have to sit down with the largest winner of the election, the Shia-led Muqtada al-Sadr group. Do they have any bargaining power left? Well, uh, thank you for having me. They didn't have a bargaining power from the very beginning, other than the very same powers that they used to have in the PMF or in the government or on the streets. The decision coming out of the Supreme Court is what led to the political deadlock from forming a government, uh, as you mentioned, following the early elections in October. However, the, the uh, four Iran groups known as the Coordination Framework um, that are aligned with Iran and the PMF, they appealed to the Supreme Court from the beginning, mostly knowing that it will fail. So it was an attempt to buy time where they could negotiate a way out from not being involved in a majority government led by the Sadrists. And that's okay. because the Sadrist movement, on the other hand, was not convinced by involving them due to their electorally defeated uh, results. But in the early stages of the negotiations between uh, the coordination framework and the Sadrist movements, the speculations appeared to be that Muqtada Sadr was more keen on working something out with the less militarized members of the framework, such as Asab Ahl al-Haq or Kitab Hezbollah. But in recent times, it was publicly known that Sadr wants to only accept a consensus government with the coordination framework if they exclude Nouri al-Maliki, who's a former prime minister and leads the strongest member of the framework, which is the state of the law. Uh, block and also consists of the highest number of the seats. Sure. And that way, Sadr attempts to uh, guarantee a more weakened and a, a fragmented coordination framework that is much easier to control in the future. It will be interesting to see what the final result is after all these talks are over. But, I mean, Al-Sadr, it seems, sort of wanted to bring the political parties together uh, as well as a nation. But he is a Shia, perhaps described as a Shia Iraqi nationalist. Can he appeal to the more pro-Iranian political parties and the Sunni groups? Or are we, as you say, going to have this sort of fragmented mishmash of parties that will survive for a, a small amount of time before there are further elections? Well, the current negotiations between the coordination framework and the, the Sajjus movement is just a, a part of an overarching intra-Shia rivalry that has been going on in the Iraqi political scene. The Sunni uh, political blocs and the Kurdish uh, political blocs are taking a back seat from these negotiations, despite having direct meetings and negotiations with both parties. But they're waiting to see what the outcomes of their rift or their negotiations will be. There are deadlines so far as the uh, first parliamentary session, which is on the January, uh, January 11th, uh, 2022, mm -hmm. where the largest Shia coalition will have to name a prime minister, which is their share of the, of the government. And if the Sadrists and the coordination framework fail to agree here, the Sunni and the Kurdish blocs will most probably not take a stance until their rift is solved either by a winner or by their unification. Okay. But if, if the, the coordination framework failed to convince the, the Sadrist for a consensus government, they will either have to accept Sadr's conditions, which means excluding Nouri Maliki, or they will have to depend on the yeah. Kurdish and Sunni blocs to convince the Sadrist movement to include them based on whatever comprises uh, they received from the coordination framework leaders during their visit to the Kurdistan region in the recent uh, weeks. A very complicated jigsaw puzzle that I think will uh, evolve in mid-January. For the moment, Zayedan al Kanani, thanks so much for joining us from Doha.